Okay, okay, yes, it's true. My last video probably wasn't done in the best of taste. Um, however, I don't retract anything that I said, but I am aware that perhaps my delivery wasn't really too humble. Um, having said that, though, I, I don't intend to mock or ridicule anyone who um, wishes to engage in serious discussion. I did just want to be a little bit more entertaining, uh, because this whole blog thing kind of gets a little bit boring. Um, and the back and forth a priori discussion wasn't really going anywhere, so I kind of wanted to get out of it. But instead, instead, forget that, boom, it's gone. Um, instead of trying to define metaphysics, which is almost an endless, uh, an endless task, I've decided to just do some metaphysics, um, specifically in the area of the philosophy of time. Um, now, I'm going to perhaps make a few videos on the philosophy of time and the different views, the different positions, the, the different subjects that come up and the objections and blah blah blah. Um, I'm going to try to remain as objective as I possibly can. That is, I'm not going to advocate one view over another as much as I can help it. But of course I can't take the view from nowhere, so my opinions might be a little bit biased, but I, I'm going to at least try to uh, let everyone else make up their own minds uh, and, and not convince people of uh, one specific side of the argument. So, what is the philosophy of time? Well, it's, it's the philosophy of time. Anyway, um, there are a variety of different issues that come up concerning the nature of time. Uh, it, it's a very, very peculiar and mind-boggling thing. Uh, what is time? Um, it seems to be an impossible question, but people nonetheless have tried to come up with frameworks and ontologies that do account for particular phenomena of time or relating to time, etc. So I'm going to perhaps be focusing on three specific issues over a series of videos which are related but separate. Okay, so the first issue that I'm going to probably talk about is the passage of time itself. Is there really a passage of time? Is time kind of like an arrow, kind of like moving forward like this, kind of like a river of time that moves? Uh, is, is there really a passage of time uh, as a mind-independent ontological entity? Or is there no such thing as time and it's merely a cognitive illusion brought on by our brains? Um, so, so that's a very, very interesting discussion. Of course, it, it looks like there's a passage of time. So the burden of proof rests with the, the people who deny the passage of time. So for clarity, um, people that think there really is an ontological passage of time that goes whoosh, are called atheists. Um, and the people that deny such a reality of passage are called B theorists or C theorists. So A theorists, perhaps they conceive the passage of time as something like this. There are certain events or objects which at the moment are future events or objects which will soon become present events or objects and eventually become past events or objects. So they have a, a kind of a tensed view of time. They think that there's a reality to the tense, the, the future, the present, and the past. The, if anything has the property of being future, it really has this property. Um, future events, present events, and past events are different because they each have a different property pertaining to, to this tense. Um, secondly, there's the uh, there's the B-theorists, and they say, no, there's no tense properties. Uh, we can reduce all tenses, uh, all things that seem to be intrinsically tensed, to a tenseless ontology. So there's no real passage of time. It's kind of like this, and time doesn't really pass. So that's one issue. The second issue that I'll probably be talking about a little bit is presentism versus eternalism. Now, this is related but um, some people think that it's not related, but I think that they're wrong. Anyway, the presentists hold that only now exists. The future and the, the past, bah, be gone with them. They don't really exist. Um, 
all that we can ever say is is now that's all that ever exists anything that's now exists anything that's past no longer exists the future doesn't yet exist um, so then the main um, position against that is eternalism who hold that the future the past and the present all exist in kind of like a four-dimensional space-time entity but it should be noted that the four-dimensional space-time entity is not an inevitable conclusion from the law of general and special relativity. Okay, so present exists, future, past exists. Uh, I'm going to talk about those in, in detail. Then finally, um, just because uh, Piero and Matt had been having the conversation about identity through time, so we've got um, paternalists and um, uh, endurantists. Paternalists think that entities kind of are, are temporarily sliced, whereas the endurantist thinks that one entity is stretched through time. So I will be having a look at those issues, and um, this again is a metaphysical topic. Uh, we can rule out certain things, well we can certainly argue about whether the past and present exists without necessarily appealing to any uh, evidence. There's no evidence that you could give me that the past really exists, and there's no evidence that could refute such a claim. Um, so this is this is where the metaphysical discussion lies, and um, I hope you'll find this subject a little bit more interesting. Peace.